Alright guys, it is a gray, gloomy, soon to be rainy day here in the end times. On my final Sunday morning in the Point Lonesome Swamp. That would make it Sunday, April 18th, 2021. And I want to thank my uh, my colleague here in the Doomosphere, Sister Sandy. As I guess she would say, my sister from another mother for bringing, giving me the idea for this rant. And today we're going to go visit a a fellow that I was actually going to uh, read an essay from over on Collapse Chronicles, and I will do that. Uh, if you want to go here, if you want to uh, hear the intelligent side of Umer Haik, you need to go over to Collapse Chronicles, but today I want to mourn the loss of uh, Umer Haik's brain and, uh, <clears throat> but anyway, <coughs> at least Umer redeems himself. Later in this essay, I don't know if you heard Sandy's version of <coughs> reading of this essay on Friday night, <clears throat> but we're going to take a Humpty Dumpty tribe spin uh, into, I don't know if this is the Doomosphere or not, you know, Umer Hake uh, is not a clueless fucking moron, okay? Umer Hake, uh, this fellow understands as well as anybody, as anybody, what is going on on this planet, and as he does say, towards the end of his essay, he does understand that the Corona Panic is a bad hair day. It is, I think, we will find out, I think uh, he's, he calls the Corona Panic a something like a tiny taste of what is to come down on this planet. So Umer understands that relative to the shitstorm uh, brewing on this planet that uh, you know, 10 years from now, the Corona Panic story probably would not rate anywhere in the top 1,000 stories on the planet. It will be uh, almost a, a, a pleasant memory a few years from now, and uh, Umer Hake understands this as well as Hambo Littletail. But anyway, Umer is not talking so much about in this article as he is in the article I will read on Collapse Chronicles. He's not talking about in the near future. I guess he is talking mostly about <coughs> the year that was, 2020. The year that was. So this is Umer Haik uh, taking a brief uh, respite from reality and uh, take it away, Umer Hake, and talk to us about the year the world lost to the Corona Panic. Hmm, they say things are going back to normal, so why doesn't it feel that way? Hmm, they say that things are going back to normal after a plague year, but I don't feel normal? <coughs> Do you? I feel a lot of a like, lot of things. Normal though? I don't think I'll ever feel normal as in the way I did before. Again, the last year, I assume he means basically 2020 or going back to uh, April of 2020, will always be with me and I think it should be that way. The first thing I feel is lucky to have survived after all so many did not hmm and still won't me and you we are probably the fortunate ones well okay i, I guess umer haik did not read the uh mainstream media yesterday or listen to my rant 
Let's see. Uh, I feel lucky to have survived. After all, so many did not. So uh, I, I didn't do this in my rant yesterday, but in, in my rant yesterday, you know, talking about how on a planet of 7.8 billion people, that 3 million people have died. Okay, so I did that math. I subtracted 7.8 billion, started with that, and subtracted 3 million, and if my math is correct, uh, despite what Umer says here, I would say somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 billion 997 million people, uh, what does he say, uh, did in fact survive. Yes. Me and you, we're probably the fortunate one. Yes, yes, Umer, me and you, we are one of the 7,997,000,000, otherwise known as the 99.96% of people on this planet who uh, survived corona, the corona panic plague. Uh, last year. Now, of course, just like the mainstream media has done, Umer Hake stops right there, does not break any of this shit down, uh, talking about, you, you know, how the age of the people, the pre-existing conditions, how fat these people were, how many of these people would not have died if they had the ability to drive past a fucking Krispy Kreme donut stop without getting their free fucking donut uh, for getting their vaccination. No mention uh, of any of this that uh, countries with high obesity rates have ten times the mortality rate of countries with low obesity rates. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Now, I don't know. I, I challenge you to find <clears throat> out how old Umer Hake is. Uh, th this man does not want it known how old he is for some reason. Uh, but looking at various pictures of this man, I'm saying Umer is about 40 years old. Clearly, the man is not obese. He is, so we're going to call Umer a 40-year-old man with uh, probably a BMI, I'm guessing by looking at him, maybe 22. And if Umer uh, were to look at these statistics on how many people, how many 40, healthy 40-year-old 40 men with, uh, with BMIs of 22, have died of corona panic, my guess uh, it would be, uh, I, I mean have survived corona panic, my guess that 99.96% of men uh, Umer's age and BMI uh, is, is nowhere near 99.96%. I'm just guessing here 99.99996% of, uh, of men <coughs> uh, Umer's age and physical condition have died. My guess, uh, again this is just a hunch, is that Umer Hake uh, and any other, uh, I don't know why I keep saying man, uh, that Umer Hake and any other person on this planet, his age and his weight, because he takes some fucking uh, personal responsibility for his own health, uh, not to turn into a fucking 
blob of adipose tissue rolling around the fucking planet. Uh, my guess is that Umer has a better chance of being struck by lightning than, than he does of, of not surviving corona panic. Umer Hank knows goddamn well everything I just said is true. His doctor wife uh, knows this too. Uh, Umer Hake has no interest in, uh, in, in putting the asterisk uh, by this unadulterated horseshit. But fortunately, uh, Umer does recover. If you can, and it, it was hard for me to get through the first half of this article, but finally, uh, <clears throat> finally. Oh, two-thirds of the way through, uh, he finally uh, gets, gets to the bigger picture, and hell yes, Umer is back in stride, and he redeems himself. Take it away, Umer. And uh, what is, what really drove home to Umer Hake and Hambone Littletail? both last year. Take it away, Umer, since everything I'm getting ready to say here, you go, Umer Hake. <clears throat> if there is one thing the last year really drove home to me, it was this, the vast, incredible power of human stupidity. It, meaning stupidity, is the force that truly makes the world go round. Yes, what ties up all the threads is human stupidity. Yes, none of this stuff, you know, about corona panic. Uh, none of this stuff. Uh, 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 anybody who wants to avail themselves to the same information that Umer Hake and Hamba Little now both have in front of them, none of the stuff, you know, about corona panic is beyond even what? A fourth grade level of thinking? Yes. Uh, the power of human stupidity was the loudest theme of the year. And, and it is again this year. This is the second year. Well, actually, uh, the power of human stupidity has been the loudest theme of the year I don't know, at least since Miguel Cervantes was writing about Don Quixote uh, tilting at windmills 500 years ago. So who was the great winner of 2020? The great winner, uh, now he says of this year, so I don't know, 2020 or 2021, I don't know what year he's talking about anymore. The great winner of this year was the devil the darkness, human stupidity in all its forms. What is stupidity? Someone who cannot subtract 3 million from 7.8 billion. That was a joke. He didn't say that. Okay, I couldn't help myself. What is stupidity? Yes, Americans think of it as being dumb, but dumb is a different thing. That is ignorance. Stupidity is more like willful ignorance. And in that sense, it's closer to evil. Yes, evil. Um, then he gets off into the January 6th thing, and I'm not going to get off into that. Uh, let's get back from the January 6th riot. Okay. <clears throat> the power of human stupidity, I think to myself. I'm brooding again. <clears throat> I think these thoughts too much. They keep me up at night. I go to the music studio to try and forget. I feel numb after this year. And I bet you feel a similar way too. Traumatized, numb, weary, still struggling to process it all. Hang in there. Here is a hug 
from me. All right, well, Umer is still hugging people. I am glad to hear that Umer Hake uh, still hugs people. I uh, thank you, Umer, for being one of the few people on the planet who still hugs people. I do appreciate the hug, Umer. Here is a hug back, brother. All right. Snowy grins up at me. I, I guess Snowy is his little dog. It took me a long time to figure what the hell he was talking about. Snowy, his little dog, grins up at me. Hey, little buddy, I say, suddenly smiling. Hey, little buddy. Sancho is not grinning. He's giving me the evil eye. Uh, would you finish this rant so uh, I can go chase swirlies? Yes. And I am reminded of what I learned this year. After all, I have always known about human stupidity, how it is another word for evil, how fast, I'm sorry, how vast and unstoppable it is. Yes. <clears throat> what I learned this year, though, was something so strange and beautiful and remarkable, I still struggle to express it in words. My best friend, my best friend, is ten inches tall. He is a tiny white cotton puff. He, meaning, what's his name, uh, Snowy, uh, he, his little dog, is more socially and emotionally and r r relationally intelligent than most people I know, myself very much included. He, meaning his little dog, is a better person than me. So what does that say about a corpus of human thought that place us, Homo sapiens, at the top of so many ladders and trees of everything. Yes. I've learned that these things have no boundaries whatsoever. Grace, truth, truth, love, care, respect, understanding, friendship, none. If a walking ape like me who broods too long and hard so much that it keeps him up all night can be best friends with a 10 inch tall cotton puff or a snickerdoodle as the case may be, well, then all the imaginary lines that are supposed to exist don't. The boundaries between us and them are blown apart Yes, by the incredible and deep and strange bond I have with a tiny little dog. Mm -hmm. uh, then uh, I, I, I love it. Uh, somebody. Uh, anyway. Uh, and so much of our thinking is based on all that, that Cartesian, Nietzschean division of worlds into us and them, which I'm going to break in here. Uh, you know, anybody who has tried internet dating on, uh, on Pile of Fish or any of these other sites this year understands that this mask divide this mask divide is the number one most divisive topic. It's, I'm 61 years old. Uh, I, I have never in my life encountered a, uh, a, a topic so divisive than this fucking mask issue. Uh, it, it has, well, right here in my own life, it, it, it has destroyed friendships. It has threatened in my family to destroy my very connection to family members. This debate over masks, uh, I am sure that uh, it, it has destroyed marriages, that uh, this debate over these fucking masks uh, ha has done more to uh, divide 
and conquer uh, the clueless sheeple on all sides of the fence. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, you know, if, if you were, had any interest in, in conquering a planet, whatever that means, the best way to do them is to divide them. Uh, where you can get, you know, like down here in the Doomosphere, any other rabbit hole, I'm sure, has been infected by this mask debate. Uh, if, if you want to blow apart, uh, in, you know, keep people from coming together, what you do is divide them. And that this whole uh, mask debate uh, has been the single biggest uh, example of what does Umer call this the Cartesian Nietzschean division of worlds into us and them. Yes. Um, and that line of thinking, us versus them, continues into our relationship with nature, which is why we are headed for decades of apocalypse now, of which COVID is just a taste. Thank you. I've been saying this for a fucking year, Umer. Thank you, Umer Haik. Yes, we are headed for decades of apocalypse now, of which COVID is just a taste. It, it is, uh, uh, COVID is, it, it is one fucking uh, Pepperidge Farm goldfish, uh, and, you know, before the, uh, the Thanksgiving feast of apocalypse and catastrophe headed our way. It, it, it is, it, it is to, to, ev to even call uh, the corona panic a taste of the apocalypse heading for us. This, it, this is the point that I have been making and any other doomer uh, who has the fucking brains and the fucking balls to call this what it is relative to what is coming down this pike. Uh, you know, having zero point, less than 0.04% uh, of humans uh, dying uh, from the corona panic. Uh, yeah, 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 guys. We're, we're, we're going to find out what apocalypse now fucking looks like. Uh, you're you're, you're going to be wishing uh, the biggest thing uh, to be fighting over are, are these fucking whether to wear a mask or not. You're going to be fighting over that fucking last can of beanie weenies, you clueless fucking moron. Anyway, <clears throat> nature is not part of us. We live in cities together where animals, even trees, don't belong. Yes. Uh, is it any surprise life on this planet is dying off when we have carved up a planet and claimed it all just for us? Us and them them against us, this for us, nothing for them, stupidity, nationalism, fascism, hate, selfishness, greed, indifference. The theme of this year for me was all of that. Yes, we don't need to have an apocalyptic future but we are going to because we cannot seem to stop ourselves from ripping up the very oceans, forests, trees, animals, and rivers we depend on. Stupidity or evil? You tell me, my friend. You tell me. 
amen, brother Umer Haik, uh, for understanding that stupidity is the defining theme of uh, last year, this year, next year. Uh, but anyway, that being said, I can get back to uh, over there to Collapse Chronicles where I'm going to restore my faith in Umer Haik and reading, I think, the essay he wrote uh, about three days before the Corona Panic one, uh, titled, We Are Ripping the Heart Out of Life on Earth and the Consequences Will Be Disastrous. This is why our civilization and way of life is heading for collapse and uh, nowhere in the story. In this essay I will read on Collapse Chronicles, will you find the C word other than collapse, which is uh, as soon as this little C word blows over, we will get to the real C word that come on over to CC for that story. Uh, coming up in one minute, <clears throat> different channel, different time. Bye, guys.